So welcome. If you are joining us today and you have not yet subscribed to our channel, we invite you to do so. Remember to like our video, to comment and to share with uh, all your friends and also hit the notification button so that you can be reminded every time we post a new video or we are about to go live. We want to see your dreams become a reality. Have you ever felt like giving up on your prayers, dreams, your visions, your ideas and dreams to be healed, to be prospered and to have a peaceful family? We, what if persistence was the key to unlocking answers to your prayers and seeing your dream become reality. We want to see how persistence in the place of prayer can yield a tremendous result to the outcome of what we want to receive from the Lord. Do you know that lots of people stop praying for a particular problem or stop going after their dreams pretty soon, within weeks or few months? because uh, the dream suddenly starts to look something out of reach or even too big to be achieved. That is what they believe, because uh, the medical report said that there is nothing that uh, modern day medicine can do to remedy their problems, or because uh, ever since they started praying for that business or for that employment, they have dug a big hole in their finances that seems impossible to extricate themselves out of it. In 2020, a research showed that only 8% of people achieve their dreams or their goals, and 92% just give up or fail to do it. I want you to be among the 8% who go after their dreams and achieve it. Whatever you are believing God for, it will take persistence and determination for you to receive that uh, promise. Paul tells us uh, that faith alone won't uh, get us the promises uh, of God. We need to add persistence. We need to add perseverance to our faith if uh, we want to obtain uh, the promises uh, of God, if we want our dream to come to pass. Therefore, there is no room for spiritual uh, laziness in the place of prayer. You will need to go after your dreams and work diligently at them for that matter. If uh, you ever want uh, the dreams and the visions and the promises of God over your life uh, to come to pass. In the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 6 verse 12, uh, Paul tells us, so that you won't become lazy, but will be imitators of those who inherit the promises uh, through faith and perseverance. And there it is, the faith and perseverance will uh, help you to inherit uh, the promises. With uh, this truth in mind, Jesus now tells us uh, the parable of the persistent uh, widow. You may think that you are helpless, like that uh, widow, and have nobody to defend you. That is not uh, true. That is a lie of the devil. As a citizen of the kingdom of God, it is incumbent on you to know your rights. By reading the Bible, which is the constitution of our kingdom, you end up discovering the rights that we have as a children of God and the rights that we have as the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus narrated a parable of the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to verse 8. He spoke a parable to his disciples that the men 
always out to pray and not lose heart, not be discouraged, not faint, and not give up, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that same city. And she came to the judge, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And uh, the judge would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And verse 6 says, Then the Lord Jesus said to his disciples, and today he is saying to us, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that God your Father will avenge you speedily, Nevertheless, when Christ Jesus, the Son of Man, comes, the question is, will he really find faith on the earth? Or will we just give up, lose heart, be completely discouraged that we no longer go after the promises of God, go after our dreams? The first thing to highlight here in this text is that uh, Fainting or giving up on our rights is not optional. We must pray until we get what God promised us. We should never quit on the promises God gave us. A Christian who faints or gives up because of adversity or opposition is spiritually weak. That kind of Christian must arm himself or herself with the word of God to know his or her rights and to pray with the scripture to edify herself or himself. Now the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 tells us that if you faint in the day of trouble or if you give up in the day of adversity it simply reveals that your spiritual strength is uh, small. Now, the reason why the early Christians uh, resisted to bloodshed their adversaries and refused to recant, but persisted in their Christian beliefs, is because uh, of their spiritual uh, strength. They were spiritually strong. The strength was uh, big enough that nothing could deter them from going after the promises uh, of God. And in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4, Paul tells us, You also have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against the sin like uh, the early believers. So we need to arm ourselves uh, with the word of God, with the right mindset that all things uh, are possible with God, that nothing is ever impossible to the person who chooses to believe. Now the second thing to highlight in the parable of the persistent widow is that she has an adversary. And we all have the same adversary who opposes us. His name is Satan the devil. People are not our enemies. People are not our adversaries, even though at times they might be used and influenced by the devil. But Satan is our adversary. In First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Peter tells us to be sober and vigilant. Why? Because we have a common adversary, the devil. Satan, the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he devours a lot people who are ignorant of God's word. He does not devour everybody. So, people are not our adversary. Like I said, Satan is our adversary. Satan is the 
the nemesis of uh, God and uh, by extension our nemesis. In John chapter 10 verse 10 Jesus tells us that Satan is a thief and uh, the thief only comes uh, but uh, to steal, to kill and to destroy. But uh, Christ Jesus when he enters your life he comes so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He gives you life in abundance, even his very life. Therefore, whatever is destroying your health, stealing from your finances, killing everything around you, has its inception in uh, hell not in heaven and uh, is stemming from satan uh, the devil i will encourage you not to be despondent and uh, give up yet because christ uh, is our champion in uh, the fight against uh, satan uh, our adversary the devil in the book of uh, psalms uh, david a man who knew the heart of God and the ways of God tells us in Psalm chapter 27 verse 13 that what we are going through he also went through it but this is the way he faced his challenges he said I would have lost the heart become despondent and given up unless I have believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You too should not lose a heart. You too should not become despondent and give up. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not when you are dead, while you are alive. So do not give up hope. Christ is your personal champion who came to destroy and undo the works of the devil in your life, in your family, and all around you. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, John is telling the church, For the devil had sinned from the beginning, when he rebelled against God and led one-third of the demon in his rebellion. And... When he came down on earth, he only had one purpose, to steal, kill, and destroy. And it is for this purpose that Christ Jesus, the Son of God, was manifested or was revealed in the flesh so that he might destroy and undo the works of the devil. So Christ is here. He came on earth. He was incarnated so that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yes, Christ Jesus has the power and authority to counsel and reverse all the damages Satan and his cohorts have done in your life, in your health, in your finances, and in your family. Now, before we continue our discourse, we would like to hear from you. Do send us your prayer requests and your testimonies so that we can join you in prayer and our faith is going to cause God to answer your prayers and share your testimonies so that we can encourage other people through your testimony. Now another thing to highlight in the parable of the persistent widow is that she came to the judge to be avenged. You must know your rights in the kingdom of God. You should not let the devil and people being used by the devil to get away with the evil deeds that they do against you. Because when you know your rights, you stand for what God said belongs to you. If you are ignorant of the word of God, it will be hard for you to know what is rightfully yours, what belongs to you that Christ already ransomed 
at Calvary. Hosea tells us in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people, God's people who belong to the kingdom of heaven are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they are ignorant and because they have rejected uh, knowledge and today you are receiving the knowledge once again of god's word i beg of you not to reject uh, this uh, knowledge when you are born anew you need to start attending a bible believing church that will teach you the full counsel of god's word so that you can know your rights uh, and no longer allow the devil and his agents to mess with you and make havoc of your life, your finances, your family and your health. It is God's will for you to prosper in your faith, to prosper in your family, to prosper in your friendships, to prosper in your finances and to prosper in your health. But you will never discover that unless you read the full counsel of the Word of God, unless you are taught the full counsel of God's Word. And John tells us in 3 John verse 2 that, Beloved, so you are greatly beloved by your Father in heaven and by the ministers of the Gospel. So I'm calling you beloved. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers so god wants you to prosper in your faith he wants you to prosper in your family in your friendships in your finances and in your health the other highlight is when you come to god in the place of prayer you are coming to your heavenly father and your heavenly father is the judge of the universe he also happens to be the law giver and uh, his intention is to save you to prosper you to heal you and to deliver you in isaiah chapter 33 verse 22 isaiah tells us for the lord is our judge the lord is our law giver the Bible is the book of the law regulating the kingdom of God. The Lord is our king. All authority and power in heaven and on earth belongs to God and he rules supreme. He will save us. He will heal us. He will deliver us and he will prosper us. Jesus in the parable of the persistent widow he's contrasting earthly judges and our righteous judge earthly judges can be unjust and they at the times have no concern and no care for the people and their circumstances but our heavenly father is a just judge he is concerned and caring about us and what we are going through we do not have to pest our heavenly father or harass him before he can answer our prayer deliver us avenge us jesus is seated at the right hand of our heavenly father the judge in the courtroom of heaven and satan is the prosecutor the accuser of the believers he accuses us to god and then accuses uh, us uh, in our hearts and our minds so that our heart and mind condemn us and then he accuses us to the people uh, around us and uh, jesus our advocate with the father is actually compassionate and sympathizes he knows what we are going through in hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 the bible says we do have a high priest christ jesus who can sympathize and empathize with our weaknesses because he was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin so Christ sympathizes and empathizes with 
our struggles, our troubles, our weaknesses. When we come to God in the place of prayer, we can unburden ourselves to Him because we know that He cares for us. He's concerned about what we are going through. Peter tells us in First Peter chapter 5, verses 7, that casting all your care upon Him, even Christ Jesus. Why? Because He cares for us. Our Advocate cares for us. And uh, our Father the Judge cares for us as well. He will take care of our predicament and uh, He will be concerned about our predicament as well. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6, Paul tells us that one of the angels testified in a certain place, and it was recorded in the book of Psalm, chapter 8, he was saying, what is man? He was asking God, the angel was testifying and asking God, what is man or mankind that you are mindful of him, that you are paying close attention to him, and are being especially conscious and concerned about everything that happens to him. Or oh, what is a son of man, a mere mortal, that you care for him, that you take care of him? So not just God takes care of you, he cares for you as well, he's concerned about you. God is inviting you to come to him in prayer and to be persistent at that because Satan is the one resisting you. God is not resisting you. Satan is the one resisting you the same way he resisted and opposed the, the prayers of Daniel. And it is recorded in Daniel chapter 10 verse 12 to verse 15 that the angel Gabriel said to Daniel and today the angel also is giving us the same revelation the angel said to Daniel do not fear Daniel why because from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God your words were heard in heaven so the first day you pray your prayers were heard in heaven and i have come because of your word that you said in prayer but the prince or the principality of the kingdom of persia withstood me for 21 days and behold michael one of the chief princes or one of the archangels came to help me gabriel for I had been left alone there with uh, the kings of uh, Persia. So, be persistent in prayer. Add to your prayer also some fasting like Daniel did, so that you can also receive the answer to your prayers, the answer of a healing and of deliverance, like Daniel received the answer of deliverance. And Romans chapter 13, verse 11, tells us that we should continue to do this, to be persistent in a prayer like Daniel and that widow who was persistent in the place of prayer, knowing that in these times that we are, we are living in terrible times. And now it is high time to awake out of sleep. If we have been spiritually lazy, it is high time to awake from that spiritual slumber. For now our salvation, our healing and our deliverance is nearer than when we first believed. When it comes to healing, we know that it is in the name of Jesus that we are healed by his stripes so we should not lose a heart but actually be persistent in prayer the real question that jesus is asking us is that when he comes to visit us for healing deliverance and whatever promises he stated in the bible will he find faith in us will he find us still praying and believing for those promises or will we completely give up isaiah chapter 53 verse 1 and verse 5 talks about the sin and the sickness bearing messiah 
it asks us a question who has believed our report you need to make up your mind to believe god's report over any other report that you receive out there and to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed so the moment you believe god's message then his power also will be extended to you manifested in your life for christ was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed and like daniel we add some fasting to our prayers when it comes to healing and deliverance because jesus personally told us in matthew chapter 17 from verse 20 to verse 21 that to our faith we needed to add also prayer with fasting and jesus said to his disciples it is because of your unbelief or lack of faith that you were not able to drive out that evil spirit of epilepsy for assuredly i say to you if you have a faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you not just to me jesus but also to you nothing will be impossible but however i'm telling you this kind of demonic oppression this kind of deliverance and healing that you are after does not go out or happen except by prayer and fasting so there you have it the full counsel of god's word explaining what jesus meant by this parable of that persistent uh, widow and uh, the first thing that you need to do today is to become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven so that god who is our judge our lawgiver and uh, who will save us can now take your case and jesus who is our advocate with the father can now defend your case you must surrender your life to christ and now is the time a good time for you to surrender your life to christ jesus and let us pray together heavenly father thank you because you are the same yesterday today and forevermore behold your sons and your daughters who are going through so many troubles and uh, they have decided to come to you because uh, satan their adversary has been making havoc of their life their health and everything that belongs to them and now they want to surrender their lives to you so that you can intervene and destroy the works of the enemy so father i pray that as many as are under the sound of my voice who have believed that you truly care for them and you are concerned about what they are going through i pray that you forgive them of all their sins and as they have purposed in their hearts never to go back into their old lifestyle of sin i pray that the blood of jesus would wash away all of their sins and you will make them as white as the snow and i pray my king and my savior as far as the east from the west scatter their transgressions and their lawless deeds and remember them no more and adopt them from today in your kingdom let them become part of the household of god give them your spirit of adoption so that they also along with all the saints can cry out abba father in jesus precious name amen